So you're probably wondering why your beats don't sound full or loud like your favorite producers. Well, in this video today, I'm gonna show you a simple, well, my simple mastering system that I use when it comes to making my beats just sound full, sound a lot louder and just harder like a lot of my favorite producers. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's get into the video. What's up producers, it's me and they call me Heat. I'm a music producer of over 15 years and on my channel right here, I show producers how to make some of the best boom bap hip hop style beats. So assuming you've made the beat and like now at this point you're like, yo, I want it to sound good, I want it to sound full, I want things to hit a lot harder. I have a very simple just mixing or just system that I go by, you know, when I'm making a beat or when I'm pretty much, I know that the beat is done and it's like, all right, I, I wanna get it ready so I can at least give it to an artist so that it's complete for them or I maybe put it on a beat tape or, you know, just whatever. I want it to sound good. A lot of the times you don't need to master your beat for the artist to rap on or if you're just gonna send it to somebody. But at the same time, you do want it to kind of sound full and sound complete because sometimes when artists get the beat from you, they're ready to just go right in. But if they gotta wait on you to mix it, they gotta wait on you to arrange it, they gotta wait on you to do all these different things, they don't even want the beat at that point. So why not just make sure that you are up to par and making sure that your beat is high quality right out the gate. So the moment they put it in Pro Tools, or their DAW or whatever, it's ready to go for them to just start rapping on, you know what I'm saying, and, and going in. So let me show you my, my, my simple system that I use. Now I have a beat here that I collab with my homie AO, shout out to AO. He has a song out called Daydreaming, and with this song, I'm not gonna play the vocals, um, but I am gonna just play the beat. So with this, of course, I needed to make sure that the beat was full, because it's, it's very cinematic, you know, very emotional. So let me just kind of play the beat, just so you can see what I'm talking about. get to like let me play like the hook area very dope beat very dope song as well you hear how the beat is super full it's super loud it's it's hitting very hard you can really hear each individual element of the beat everything is full everything is punchy the bass is still is crispy it's it's cutting through the mix as well and i want to show you how i achieve that process so let's get into it step one is your arrangement making sure that the beat has some type of format to it a lot of times i talk to producers and they show me this loop and they're like, yo, I'm ready to just mix that. I say arrange the beat first to make sure that the beat is good, you know? Make sure you have your transition effects and your drum fills all in place. Make sure that you have, you know, your crash in place. You know, all the different things that you may be putting in the beat, different elements, make sure that they're in there before you start focusing on mixing the beat. Because what I've learned over the years is that I noticed that once I start adding things in after I've mixed, now it kind of throws the rest of the mix off. Reason being, sometimes things fall into place, but the reason being is because now you're adding different elements with different textures, different frequencies, and they're kind of clashing with other frequencies that may be in there. So now you have to go in, EQ it, do all the, it, a lot of different extra steps that you have to do. Now, had you, you know, added those sounds in prior to your mixing, it wouldn't take away from a lot of time, you know what I mean? So you wanna ensure that your arrangement is, is good. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. So when you look at this beat here, it just looks like a bunch of just blocks and patterns and stuff. But when you look at it, here's the intro. We have our intro first, we just got a couple sounds. And that's, that's just an intro that I use. So a way for people to kind of know that the track is coming in, things are happening. There's that drum fill there to let you know that, all right, something's about to change. And I talk about this in my uh, arrangement video where I'm talking about just making sure that you have something going on, if even if it's very subtle, that the listener or the, or the rapper or whoever is listening to the beat knows that, oh, it's about to be a change, something else is about to happen. In the arrangement here, I, I change it up. So every four bars, I change it up. Four bar intro, verse, 
and there's you know pieces that are missing next four bars pieces you know we brought the hi-hats in um then the next four to eight bars we brought the bass in and the hook of course is going to be full it's going to have everything that you need in it so it has all the sounds pretty much that you you know you put in there that's going to be the hook the hook is like the the most full biggest area or aspect of the whole track so yeah so arrangement you want to ensure that you have very unique or just good arrangement because uh yeah that will definitely play a big role while you're mixing now step two having a good mix but having headroom so while you're you know listening to this beat everything sounds full it sounds loud it sounds very clear that's because after i put the, the beat together and i arranged it now i'm going in and i'm mixing the beat and ensuring that each sound has its place in the track with me i like my drums to hit i like the drums to be to drive the track for me i'm a drum guy so i'm gonna play this beat with the mastering effects you know everything all together on and then i'm gonna bypass this and show you and break down a little bit of what headroom means. Let me play it with and then I'll play it without. So as you heard there, when I have it toggled on and all the mastering effects are on, you know, that brings everything up, makes it smack, makes it push through with it turned off it brings everything down to kind of like your mom walked in the room and told you to turn the music down in my mixer here i have all of my sounds which pertains to this beat is all in a bus i'm going to show you what's in the bus very simple so what i did was like i said i'm, I'm a drum guy i like my drums to hit first so i always start with my 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 kicks my snares things like that so with my kick drum i like to have it about 6 db of headroom so i start there that's pretty much like my rule i don't want to say i don't want to say that's the main rule but that is a, a very common uh rule is giving your beat negative 60 of, of of headroom but i use that rule on my kick so i start there with my kick drum and I try to keep everything around 6 dB or no more than 3.5 dB, uh, negative 3.5 dB. Try to start at six. And as you can hear, when the open hat hit is when you saw that it went up to negative 4.2, but with the kick and the snare, both sitting there, both sounding good, it was only at negative six dB because all of those frequencies hit at the same time, which is okay, it's fine. We're not over our 3.5 rule either. Negative three, negative 3.5 is where you wanna have that, all right, I'm doing a little too much. This is okay at negative 4.2. I'm gonna bring my hi-hats in. And we're good. Our drums are good. Our drums are hitting. Now what we need to do is bring the melody and stuff like that in. And then once we bring that in, we want to balance that with the kicks and the snares. We don't want those to overpower the kicks and the snares. We want those to kind of sit right with or below the kicks and the snares. And as you can see, it's still not hitting above 3.5, negative 3.5. It's at negative 3.6 with the piano. Now, those are pretty much all of the sounds in this beat. That's There's not a lot going on in this track at all. The only thing that we have extra to add in is the bass. But as you can see, my, my point is, is that you wanna have that headroom in your beat to ensure that you know once you get to the final stages of mixing this beat mastering it and getting it you know till it's full volume you still have space before it starts distorting or sounds over compressed um you know squished you don't want that squished sound now if you're liking what you're seeing so far and you've got some value from this or this has helped you or anything that i've spoken about has helped you in any type of way please do not be afraid to give the video a thumbs up let me know that you feel in the video all right let me get back into showing you this next step. Now, step three is very crucial. The only way for you to achieve that loudness is with this step, and you can do this with any mastering or limiting limiter plugin that you have. Doesn't necessarily have to be to this specific one that I'm gonna show you. This is just the one that I'm comfortable with that I like to use, and that is called the L2 by Waves. You can get this plugin by hitting the link below in the description, grab up the L2, and you can be having the same settings using the same plugin that I have. Um, if you have a limiter in your DAW that you like to use, you can use that as well. You just have to make sure that, you know, 
things match up and this plugin really is like two settings. Now, assuming you have, again, mixed it, got it leveled out, got all your sounds to sound good, got things, you know, sitting where they need to sit and they're below negative three dB or negative 3.5 dB. Now let's add some mastering and we get that loudness. And I'm telling you, this is why I said it's very, very simple because if you follow that rule, this next thing will fall right into place and you won't have to do 50,000 other things. Literally, if you make sure all your sounds, you have quality sounds first, you have good leveling and you have good mixing as far as EQ, compression, you know, you're cutting certain frequencies on certain sounds, things like that. Now, when you throw this plugin called the L2, essentially a limiter, they have a preset in here called 16 bit moderate limiting is what I use. So I'm gonna do a full reset. And essentially, as you see, our threshold is set at zero, ceiling is set at zero, but listen to the beat when I add this on. Oh, nothing happened because we didn't set it. We got to set it. All right, so we go to load and again, we use the moderate limiting. It sets our threshold at negative six, sets our out ceiling at negative 0 0.2. So basically it's not gonna hit above 0 point, negative 0 0.2. That's like the stopping point, follow me. wanted to ensure that the the beat is pumping as far as the kicks and the snares when the kicks hit it only brings it down a little bit not even enough for you to even know that it's being brought down it's not taking a bunch of the transients from the kick it's still balancing things out so without the l2 it sounds like this and with the l2 it's like this When I say this is simple, this is very, very, very simple. There's no wrong way when it comes to mixing. You just need to ensure that it sounds good. Don't over compress, things like that, because that's when things start getting nasty. So this is my very simple mixing, mastering system, whatever you want to call it. Now, after me giving you these this simple system here, tell me what you do. Tell me what you may have done before or if this is something that you are going to implement now. Let me know what your plugin chain looked like before when it came to mastering your beats. All right, because I want to just see what everybody else does. It's always interesting to see what other producers do, how they achieve their goal, especially when things sound good. I've seen producers you've used 10 plugins on a chain sounds good but it's it I'm then able to show them a way to achieve that same goal with maybe just a couple plugins if you liked what you saw today make sure you give the channel a thumbs up make sure you subscribe to the channel as well and until the next video I'll see y'all peace we denied all this fake love and this hay fever she around cold where I'm from call it snake season I hate leaving this is my only escape but damn I gotta wake up I'm daydreaming again. Dreamer, dreamer, dreamer.